Hello and welcome to Using SALT for Configuration Management and Orchestration. I'm Elle with Linux Academy and Cloud Assessments. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about this course. So before you take this course, there are a couple of prerequisites that you want to think about. I highly suggest you have some background in Linux, probably around some intermediate knowledge. If you've taken our LPIP course or our RHCSA, you are more than prepared. And although most of the Linux we're actually using is fairly basic, we're working with files, we're moving, we're copying things, we do expect you to have enough Linux experience to understand what we're actually doing to our minions in Salt. And of course, experience with Apache and MySQL is also a plus because those are some of the Salt formulas we're going to be creating, but it's not mandatory. I also suggest you have a preferred command line text editor that you're quite familiar with. I'll be using Vim, but you're welcome to use whichever one you prefer. We also suggest you have a general familiarity with certain DevOps concepts and terms. We do offer a basic rundown on most concepts we're covering. However, you'll probably find it beneficial if you're already familiar with ideas such as infrastructure as code. Now, let's talk about the actual goals of this course. By the end of this course, you're expected to have a functional knowledge of SALT. You'll be able to use SALT in your work's infrastructure. You'll be able to use SALT in your own infrastructure and you'll be able to apply SALT concepts to everyday DevOps problems. Specific to this, you should be able to use execution modules to orchestrate actions across multiple servers. So if you have to run an emergency update on all of your web servers, you should be able to do this in one command. You'll also be able to use infrastructure as code concepts to create SALT and state formulas that can be used and reused every time you add a new server or need to make a change to multiple servers. So what will we actually be learning here? Well, we're going to start off with some SALT concepts where we learn what SALT is, what the primary components of SALT are, and how we can use YAML most effectively alongside SALT to achieve our goals. We're also going to cover installing and configuring SALT. We're going to learn how to use both the simple bootstrap script to bootstrap a master and a minion. We're also going to look at installing SALT via the SALT stack provided repos on Debian-based and CentOS-based servers. We're going to work with key management to ensure only our approved minions can see the master and our minions only try to access the appropriate master. We're also going to talk about renaming minions and the use cases where we'll have to rename minions. Next up, we're going to begin with execution modules, which allow us to run commands on multiple minions at once. We'll also learn how to target which of the minions we want to work with instead of just running everything against the whole fleet. And we're also going to learn how to use modules if we log onto a minion itself. And then when we're done, we're going to get to the real meat of the course, which is learning about salt states and formulas. We're going to first learn how to write a basic state and a basic formula, and how to use the top.sls file to map our states and formulas to our minions. We're going to learn how to manage static files within salt, and how to create relationships between states. After that, we're going to expand our knowledge of states and formulas to learn how to template them out. This will allow us to use the same state across multiple distributions, and it will also let us parameterize salt with something called a map.jinja file. We'll also learn how to create file templates so we don't have to save a hard copy of every configuration file for every use case we might have for it. We'll also learn the best practices for setting up our formulas in salt and Jinja. And then finally, in terms of states and formulas, we're going to take a look at Pillar, which lets us use user-supplied variables to expand our formulas. We'll learn how to encrypt our data in Pillar, and we'll learn how to use Pillar with Jinja, which will let us loop through a single state to act as multiple states. And then finally, of course, we'll learn the best practices of using Pillar. And then after that, we have one more section where we're going to put it all together. We start this course looking at states and formulas part by part. We create the basic state, and then we expand it, and then we add pillar. In this section, we're going to see how we can create a salt pillar and all of its states from scratch using Jinja and pillar and everything from the start. So that's what you have to look forward to for this course. You may now mark this video complete and move on to the next. Thank you for watching.